Hi, my name is Dmitry. This talk sheds light on the state-of-the-art serverless systems that use snapshots. I will show how to experiment with serverless systems in academia and demonstrate our latest achievements in tackling serverless cold starts. Why all of us like serverless computing? Well, serverless allows users to focus on writing their own code as a composition of functions, whereas the cloud providers take care of all the heavy lifting that is deployment and automatic scaling of function instances according to the traffic changes. This is great for serverless users, but we know that this raises all possible challenges for the providers. Given the popularity of serverless computing today, a lot of researchers are now interested in serverless. So the question is, how can we study the real serverless systems? So we embarked on a journey to find the right tools for serverless research. First, we looked at the production serverless deployments. The systems feature complex distributed software stacks with many proprietary components a bad fit for research. Second, we analyze the tool chains that academic researchers use in their experiments. Without an access to the proprietary systems, academics often resort to study distinct components rather than complete systems. Also, for example, many academic prototypes rely on outdated technologies like containers that are insufficient for high security so that the service leaders have long moved on to using lightweight virtual machines instead. Hence, what is missing today is a complete open source framework for serverless research. We decided to integrate production grade components from the leading cloud providers in a single serverless framework. We adopted Knative from Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or CNCF, that provides a flexible function as a service programming model. Google and CNCF built Knative to run on top of Kubernetes, that is a production cluster management framework. For managing functional lifecycle on a bare metal host, we used Containerd. To offer production-grade security guarantees for function isolation, we chose the Firecracker hypervisor. Finally, for the control and data planes throughout the system, we chose the gRPC communication fabric. We call this framework vHive, as we regard serverless as a home for functions that are tiny and numerous, just like honeybees. VHive strives to fill in the gap by satisfying all needs of the researchers in serverless. VHive is representative of production clouds and includes only open source production grade components. VHive features an ecosystem for serverless benchmarking, both end to end and per component, supporting distributed tracing as well. At a high level, the VHive architecture is similar to AWS Lambda. First, since VHive's main goal is benchmarking, it includes a number of load and latency measurement clients that drive the function invocation traffic and report various metrics. The invocations are gRPC or HTTP requests that first arrive at the front-end load balancing service, Istio, that we selected based on its popularity for data center applications. Then the invocation traffic is forwarded to workers that host function instances. Function instances are created dynamically according to the demand with a requested keep alive policy. In VHive, Kubernetes drives the control plane by issuing Kubernetes control messages called Container Runtime Interface Requests or CRI requests to the VHive CRI component. VHive CRI acts as a software router that implements the CRI commands via calls to the two versions of ContainerD. Stock ContainerD drives regular containers that run trusted provider code, like any Kubernetes and Knative services. Whereas Firecracker ContainerD manages the lifecycle of micro VMs that run untrusted user provided code. On the worker, the invocation first comes to a queue proxy container deployed for each function. This container monitors the depths of the request's queue in front of each function instance. The queue proxy then reports this information to the Knative Autoscaler service that makes scaling decisions. After that, queue proxy forwards the requests to a function instance that runs inside the micro VM. The functions are deployed as gRPC servers with user provided handles that perform the actual work. Finally, to bring VHive to the cutting edge of today's serverless systems, we added snapshot in supports to Firecracker Container D. Integrating production-grade components together makes VHive a framework of choice for serverless researchers, allowing to innovate across the whole stack. 
Using the Hive, we investigated the cold start delays in a state-of-the-art serverless system. The providers are ready to deliver cheap and quick solutions, but the problem is that the users aren't grateful. Once they hear of serverless prices and efficiency, they tend to take serverless clouds to their limits of performance and economical value. For example, today providers have to run functions that are, in, that are invoked very rarely, like once per hour, as a norm. At the same time, they deploy really short functions, and nevertheless they want their functions to run fast without willing to pay a lot. Okay, maybe now some of you would think that yet another academic is trying to scare you by referring to the cases that are uncommon in practice. The bad news is that this is not an extreme, but the norm in serverless today. This chart from a recent study by Azure Functions shows function execution time on the horizontal axis, and please note that the horizontal axis is logarithmic. The vertical axis shows that the, the cumulative distribution of functions. Clearly, the vast majority of functions run for just 100 milliseconds to few seconds in duration. The second chart shows the frequency of invocation on the horizontal axis and the cumulative distribution of Azure serverless applications consisting of one or more functions. We can see that most functions are called, as in 80% of functions are invoked less frequently than once per minute. To sum up, this is bad news for the providers, as most functions are the nasty ones, short and cold ones, that challenge the infrastructure the most. First experiments with Beehive showed that with the current technologies, the dominant fraction of the cold start delays is attributable to the local worker infrastructure. To give you an intuition, for a simple hello world function, the cluster delays are lower than 20 milliseconds, while the internal worker delays account for from hundreds of milliseconds to several seconds. The same behavior is described in the NSDI20 paper by the Firecracker team. Hence, we had to dig deeper into the root cause of these delays on a single worker. Following the setup described in the Firecracker paper, we configured the worker setup in VHive similar to a worker in AWS Lambda. In this setup, the VHive CRI component plays the role of AWS Lambda micromanager that terminates all connections to the components inside and outside of the worker. In this setup, the micromanager itself injects invocations via gRPC connections to the functions and microVMs. We extended Firecracker Container D to support Firecracker snapshots that provide the lowest cold start delays in the state of the art setting. Now, let us recall how Firecracker snapshots work. First, a snapshot of a VM is taken when a function in the VM is ready to serve incoming invocations. The procedure of loading a VM from a snapshot has three steps that are similar to the ones described in the Catalyzer paper from ASPOS20. First, the hypervisor loads and restores the state of the VM monitor and all the emulated devices. Then the hypervisor maps the guest memory file into the main memory without populating the memory contents and resumes VM execution from the point at which the snapshot was taken. Finally, the microVM manager restores the connection with the function inside the VM. Note that this step is not essential for a generic VM restoration, but is required to restore connectivity to the rest of the serverless infrastructure. With this infrastructure, we are finally ready to answer one of the key questions of this talk. How fast is Firecracker snapshotting for the cold functions? We deploy a worker node on a server-grade CPU with Ubuntu 18 operating systems with a stock kernel. One of the key assumptions is that the VM snapshots are stored on a local SSD as the fastest possible cold storage in cloud. However, the conclusions from our studies generalize to other storage types like HDD and remote storage services. MicroVMs use the default kernel provided in the Firecracker repository. Regardless of the functions, MicroVMs are configured with a single vCPU and 256 MB RAM that is close to the most popular function configurations. For evaluation, we adopt functions from FunctionBench, a representative suite of various serverless functions written in Python. FunctionBench includes HTML rendering, encryption, image and video processing, serialization and deserialization of a JSON file, and several functions for machine learning inference and training. We dockerized all these functions as handles of Python gRPC servers. Finally, it is crucial to carefully model cold invocations. Since cold invocations happen rarely, most, if not all, guest memory pages would be evicted by the time a new invocation arrives. To model this behavior, we explicitly flush the host operating system cache 
um, after each function invocation. First, we characterize the latency breakdown for each function type for warm and cold invocations. We measure the latencies from the point of the micromanagers injecting the request to a function to the point of receiving the corresponding response from the function. On this chart, you can see the measured latency breakdown as pairs of stacked bars for each function type. Left bars show the warm invocation latencies while the right ones show the cold invocation delays. One can see that warm invocations are notably faster than their cold counterparts. First, upon a cold invocation, the micromanager needs to restore the gRPC connection to the function inside the VM. That takes a considerable amount of time. Second, the actual function processing takes an order of magnitude more time than for the warm invocations. And this looks strange. What could slow down function processing in a cold invocation? The deal is that these functions are written in Python and use quite a lot of different functionality inside the guest OS. For example, the gRPC communication fabric and the networking stack. Now we should recall that Firecracker doesn't populate guest memory with its contents, with its contents from the snapshot, instead relying on lazy paging. This results in a series of page faults arising after the function resumes its execution. The chart shows the number of page faults that occur when processing different functions. These page faults are processed one by one and take a lot of time because many of them require retrieving their contents from disk. Hence, we found that the disk accesses upon the page faults dominate the whole cold start latency. To get a better understanding, we studied the traces of these page faults for each function using the user page fault functionality in stock Linux. With this feature, the hypervisor registers a VM's guest memory as an anonymous virtual memory region on the host and delegates page faults handling to a user when process. The bar chart on the right plots the number of pages accessed per function type, showing which pages are touched only in a single invocation and which pages are accessed across invocations. We make two key observations about the memory footprint of the functions. First, the functions access a small to moderate amount of memory. Second, the functions tend to access the same pages in the guest memory across different invocations, even when taking different inputs. One can see in the chart that the unique pages are the minority for all the functions. This takes us to a simple yet powerful idea of recording and prefetching the working set of the functions upon a cold start. Our record and prefetch solution called Reap Snapshots consists of the two phases. First is the record phase, where upon the very first invocation, the system intercepts the page faults and loads the pages into the guest memory on demand, while at the same time capturing these pages as the function working set. After the invocation processing is finished, the captured working set is written back to storage. All invocations after the first one enjoy the expedited prefetch phase. First, the entire working set file is read from the storage, then all this, then all these pages are installed eagerly into the guest memory. That allows to avoid the bulk of the page faults, except for the rare accesses to the pages outside of the working set that are still retrieved from the storage on demand. This way, reap snapshots accelerate all the cold starts after the first invocation at the cost of a little extra storage. To demonstrate where the efficiency of reap comes from, we evaluate the following four config configurations, starting with the vanilla firecracker snapshots and evaluating the reap configuration itself in the end. The first configuration is the vanilla snapshots configuration that loads the VM monitor and starts processing a function invocation immediately without populating the guest memory with the data. During this processing, a series of major page faults occur, leading to a significant slowdown. The root cause for this slowdown is the little bandwidth that serial page faults can extract from the SSD. The second configuration fetches all the working set pages from the storage in parallel and installs these pages into the main memory. This leads to many accesses to scatter locations inside the large guest memory file that is resident in the SSD. This configuration is nearly twice faster than with the vanilla snapshots because parallel accesses extract more SSD bandwidth that is, however, still far from the peak bandwidth of the SSD due to the random access pattern. 
The third configuration replaces many concurrent accesses to the SSD in the previous configuration with a single I.O. operation and retrieves, and retrieves a compact file that contains all the working set pages tightly packed, reducing the working set pages retrieval delay by almost three times. We find, however, that the host file system, particularly the OS page cache, limits the bandwidth that can be extracted from an SSD. Hence, the ultimate configuration, that is the one that we call REAP, bypasses the page cache when retrieving the working set file from the SSD, extracting considerable bandwidth from the SSD compared to other configurations. Thanks to careful optimization of the SSD accesses, REAP achieves a significant speed up versus the vanilla snapshots. This chart shows the call latencies of different functions. Each pair of bars corresponds to a single function type. In each pair, the left bar stands for the vanilla firecracker snapshots, while the right bar stands for the reap snapshots. First, one can see that reap significantly reduces the time of restoring a connection between a function server inside the microVM and the microVM manager, showing the efficiency of prefetching their gRPC code and the networking stack. Function processing is reduced by more than four times on average for all workloads except video processing that nevertheless achieves a slight speed up overall due to faster connection restoration. The overall speed ups for almost all functions are significant as well. Reap delivers 3.7 times faster call than vacations. This work seeks to equip serverless systems researchers with the open source VHive framework that unlocks serverless experimentations with systems as close to production as possible. Using VHive, we analyzed the guest memory access patterns when using snapshots and found that the functions tend to access the same pages in the guest memory when processing different invocations. This insight allows us to design a simple yet powerful record and prefetch technique that we called reap snapshots that records the function working set pages upon the first invocation of a function and significantly reduces the cold start latencies for all future invocations of that function by almost eliminating the page faults to the guest memory. Reap is a seamless extension of the existing mechanisms and is implemented entirely in user space, requiring less than 250 lines of code in Firecracker and Container D. Finally, REAP can be implemented in any infrastructure that relies on VMs or containers. I'm glad to say that VHive is already in use by several researchers and practitioners outside of our university. I encourage you all to join the growing VHive open source community in our efforts of building serverless systems of tomorrow. Thank you.